at the bugs and everything else. Um, and I forgot that when I do that, the software loses track of everything. So apologies for that. I'll cut this bit out later on. So anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> Merv, the Heart of the Silk Road, to give it its full title. This is a new game that's coming out later on this year. Uh, Fabio Lupiano is the designer. Ian O'Toole, the artist. Osprey Games are the publisher. Now, I've only played a couple of Fabio's games. I've enjoyed them both. Ian O'Toole, obviously, I've worked with Ian before in his graphic design and art is excellent. Osprey Games published some really good quality game. The production quality is always really good. And I've done some work for Osprey Games before. So when they mentioned this one to me, I, and, I, I, and they said, would you like to do a tutorial video? I said, yes, based on that, that, and that. Okay, I don't know anything about this game yet. Sound is choppy. All right, hang on a minute. Let me turn it off. <laughs> Put it back on. As I was saying, uh, yeah, the combination of Fabio, Osprey, Games, and Eno Tool meant I was very interested in the game anyway. And what little I do know about it is based on this, okay? Now, I can look at an image of a game set up and I can already get the impression of whether I'm going to like that game or not. And this is all I've got to go on. So I can tell from looking at this, this is probably the kind of game I'm going to enjoy. So yeah, obviously I'm very happy that Osprey Games asked me to create the tutorial video for it because it's always nice working on games that you actually, you know, as a, as a gamer, you, you like. Anyway, right, let's get, let's get on with the unboxing. Thank you for joining me. Apologies for the audio. Choppy until clear. Ho hopefully that's fixed it. Um, there's not much else I can do. Number of players is a good question. I think it is one to four. Yes, one to four players. There is a solo mode included in the game. Lots of streaming folks seems to be having uh, issues with USB sound devices. Yeah, and Chris is saying that's fixed it. Good. Good. Uh, I'm glad that's fixed it. Right. Okay. So Merv. A gateway between the East and the West, a hub of scholarship and trade, the greatest city in the world. Now, if you're anything like me, I know all my knowledge of history and geography and everything else comes from board games. So I've never heard of Merv. I've heard of the Silk Road. I know the historical, historical significance of it, but I don't know about this. And what I like to do uh, with games is I like to then go and learn a bit more about the actual thing. Because these games are generally based on a real thing that happened. Um, so I'm actually going to do a little bit of reading of Wikipedia, assuming that's true, for this game, um, to find out what this is. And I'll probably do that before, before obviously, writing the rule book, just to, um, just to see how much of that actual theme comes across in games. Because, you know, Euro games, sometimes the theme doesn't come across at all, sometimes it does. I will find out. Okay, so we're going to look at the rule book first. So I've had nothing to do with this rule book. Uh, now, Osprey Games rule books tend to be pretty good. I'm just going to turn the brightness down a little bit because it does look a bit bright. There we go. Yeah, Osprey Games rule books tend to be pretty good. Um, so, yeah, obviously, one of the first things that I'll be doing um, is learning how to play the game. Um, what I'm probably going to do for my Patreon supporters, a special treat. Um, I will probably do a live stream one afternoon where I sit there and learn how to play the game myself. Now, that's not a video that will ever go out uh, live onto my YouTube channel because it is literally me sitting at home learning how to play the game. But I do a lot of behind the scenes sort of stuff for my Patreon supporters. So at some point in the next couple of weeks, I will be sitting down one afternoon learning how to play and I might as well live stream it for you. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, yeah, and at that point, I will have a good read through the rulebook. But so far, visually, it all looks well laid out, nice graphics, not too much. And judging by the amount of text, it's probably, I'm going to guess, a medium weight game based on what I've seen here. We will find out. Right, okay, move that to one side. Uh, Carly's saying it's moved. Didn't he have a talk show back in the 70s? Yes, apparently so. <laughs> um, right, okay, we have. Let's look at the game board next and let's move those wooden components out of the way. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, E&O tool artwork, always very, very nice, always very, very clear. Ian excels at combining uh, great artwork with, with graphic design to the point where everything you need is right in front of you and it's all intuitive and you can see and all of the icons are clear and everything else. So this is the game board. I think another thing that Ian's good at is capturing the, the theme of the game in the artwork. If you look at some of his other games, 
Um, he's done that. And this, this is no exception. Again, not being a history buff, but these all look, the whole look of this looks to match, you know, the area of the world and the time that this, this was set. Uh, colour choices is important to bring across the theme in the game. So there we go. We have a score track around the outside. Who knows? I don't know much about it. So we'll move that to one side and let's have a look at, let's have a look at these bits next. So we've got two sheets of punch board included in the game. Uh, we're going to do Paul's punch test on them. Well, that one's already started to fall out. Okay. So these, these are, yeah, these, these are punching fairly easily. Yeah. Okay. So good, good, good cutting on them. I'm a, I'm a backwards punching person, just in case. A couple of them are sticking a little bit, so you've got to be a little bit careful that they don't rip. But no, the, these look fine. So yeah, they're punching out okay. Uh, yeah, so two sheets of those. Uh, and you can see if it's going to focus. Is it going to focus? It is going to focus. There you go. So you can see the, they're pretty gorgeous. Yeah, I like, I like them. So yeah, there we go. Right, okay, that's that. Now, presumably, these go on here. Yeah, I think I've worked that out. Right, next. Bright orange insert. Ziploc bags. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Something in a little sealed pack. So I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's promos or something, but who knows? Um, Osprey Games are in the chat. Ian's here as well. Thank you very much, Ian, for joining in. Uh, <laughs> Merv was one of the largest cities in the world in the 13th century, destroyed by the Mongols. Those yeah, pesky Mongols. Um, was in modern day Turkmenistan. Ah, there we go. Right. Okay. As I said uh, earlier on, I will be doing a bit of research for this. Right. Let's have a look at these. And I'm probably going to zoom in a bit. Get rid of that bit of a lot bike because we have some custom shaped pieces which are quite nice ah osprey games are saying those are the cards for solo play right okay so these cards here in this extra pack solo play cards right we have some nice little walls wall pieces custom wall pieces uh, we have some other custom wall pieces now these i don't know if you can see but there's a there's a ridge in the top is that going to focus is it going to focus there you go. Yeah, so there's a ridge in the top. I don't know if something goes in that ridge. Probably doesn't. But yeah, so nice little wall pieces. Yeah, I do like it when you get custom wall pieces. Uh, or, well, custom anything pieces. So that's those. Uh, we have some cubes. We have... Okay. Brown, teal, purple, white, orange. So those can't be player colours. Because there's five of them. Player colours must be these. Because we've got meeples in yellow, uh, blue. Uh, yeah, yellow, blue, red and black are the player colours. Each player colour has houses, discs, meeples. Right, so they're the player colours. Oh, I've just spotted. Every game is better if it's got camels in it. Did one of those walls fail to get an arch cut out? Ah, yes. Unless it's a special wall. So <laughs> so this is either uh, a miscut or it's a special wall piece that is of significance. Osprey Games are in the chat. They will, uh, they will tell me uh, if that is uh, deliberate um, <laughs> or, if it's, or if it's a slight mistake. If it's a slight mistake, um, I mean, that sort of thing doesn't bother me. But for the purposes of the video, I'll probably get them to send me another one. Because obviously the how to play video, if I'm going to need all of those pieces, thank you very much for, for mentioning that. Well spotted. Uh, they're modelled on the remaining walls of the city. Ah, right. Very nice. Anyway, as I was saying, camels. Uh, it's a special one just for me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I do like getting special treatment. Right. So we have camels. Now, these are, these are very cool. Let me zoom in a bit more on these camels. There you go. You can see these camels. This one's upside down. So yeah, I've not seen this particular type of camel before. Um, and I've got a few games with camels in, actually. And I've always said games with camels in are better games. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Ian's saying, how on earth did that happen? Yes, indeed. How on earth did that happen? Um, 
No, I'm quite I'm quite pleased with my special one actually, <laughs> especially if it turns out to be unique. Um, I'll get Fabio to sign it. I'll get Fabio to, do, to draw, draw some graffiti on the back of it. That's what I'll do. Anyway, camels. We also have some cards. Uh, so we have some small cards. Camels look awesome, says Stephen. Yes. <laughs> Carl says you can park them in the camel lot. Oh dear. Now, I would be able to get this open if my nails weren't all shot to pieces. Here we go. Right. So, cards. Not many cards in the game. We have some small cards. There's this many. Uh, these are... Oh, these are thick. These are... These feel thicker than normal cards. I mean, they're a bit smaller, so maybe it's that. But certainly they're not, they're not thin cards. They're good quality cards. Yeah. So we have... Yeah, various cards and yeah, who knows? I will find out more what these are, but let's just have a bit of a zoom in on these so you can see. Uh, <laughs> it's closed to keep the Mongols out. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a special wall just for me to keep the Mongols out. Right, so here's the cards. So you can just have a, uh, a closer look at them, see what they are. Different resources. Uh, and then there's another type of card. Is that gonna go that way? which are these cards. And again, I'm looking at these and obviously there's quite a bit of information on here, but it all looks, it all looks clear. This for me says spices of different types will get you more points the more you have. That's what it's telling me. One of the things I've always wanted to try is actually playing a game without reading the rule book and just trying to work out how to play the game just from looking at the components. Um, Maybe I'll do that one day. Probably not with this game. <laughs> right, okay, there we go. That is that is everything, apart from, as I say, these solo cards that are in a special pack. Okay, so six solo cards. Um, well, since you're here, and I don't know much about it, let's go to the rule book and let's just see what it says. And does it say on the back of the box? So yeah, it says, one to four players, 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah, probably won't be 90 minutes for your first game. Um, but interesting, it says 90 minutes as a fixed number rather than 60 to 120 minutes. Um, that, that tells me that it's the same length of time no matter how many players in the game. Uh, but it might be wrong. It, it, yeah, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out when we play. Um, So, you don't need to read this section first. Skip ahead to page four and refer back to this section as needed. That's actually really good because I know I like a components list at the start of a rule book. Um, but what I generally don't do in the rule books that I do is I don't start explaining the components. I literally just list all of the components. Um, but I know a couple of people have said you don't actually, you know, having a big components list at the start, who actually looks at it? Who reads it? You don't. You just look at it and you go, right, they're the components, and then you go to the setup. So it's kind of nice that it says, look, you can skip past this bit for now, come back to it when you need it, start learning how to play the game with the setup, and then if you want to know what camels do, you can actually look back here. Uh, replay value, your thoughts. I hope you're not asking me, because I've no idea. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I don't know how to play yet. This is literally an unboxing. People in the chat know more about the game than I do. Um, yeah, I will find out. Ian is saying the turn order and action selection mechanism is what distinguishes the game. It's super clever and it packs a lot of ramifications into a few decisions. All oh, right, so they're probably asking Ian for his opinion on the game. Um, excellent. Yeah, that's good. The turn order and action selection mechanism. Right. I look forward to that. Um, yeah, I'm not going to sit here and read the rules at the moment. I think I'm going to wrap things up. So thank you very much for joining me. Um, as I mentioned, there will be a how to play video for this game coming. When's it coming? <laughs> Let me just check my calendar uh, because at the moment I'm kind of losing track of what day of the week it is or even what month it is. Um, let me just check my calendar so that I can tell you. Work timings, yearly schedule. Here we go. Right. So I have this booked in 
for the start of November. So that's when I'm going to be doing it. At some point around the end of October is when I will probably do the Paul learns how to play the game from reading the rulebook video, which, as I say, will be a behind the scenes video for my Patreon supporters. That'll probably be end of November, uh, end of October each time. But I have the first week in November booked out purely to film the how to play video for this. So it should be done, he says, by the end of the first week in November, probably the second week, depending on uh, how timings work. So, yeah. That's uh, that's everything. Ian is saying all of the playtesters were keen to play again, and that's always a good sign. Yeah, I think, I mean, certainly, Ian, the the games of yours, uh, the games which you've been the artist and the graphic designer on, I, I tend to like those games as well. But like you, we've probably both worked on games that we've then given to our playtesters, and they've gone, yeah, I don't really want to play that again. So, <laughs> you know, it's it's nice when you get a game that is actually a good game as well. And certainly, certainly the ones that I know Ian's worked on, um, you know, recently have all been pretty good games. So, yeah, there we are. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm going to be playing some Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion tonight. We're starting our Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion campaign, which won't be live streamed, uh, but I might, I might do some... Uh, time-lapse videos on it. We, we will see. Um, this video was not sponsored, by the way. So Osprey Games have commissioned me to create the tutorial video. This video is not sponsored. Um, it's purely supported through the, uh, through the Patreon campaign. So if you like the content that I make and you want to see this sort of thing, uh, as well as, as I say, the secret behind the scenes footage, I built a Calax last week uh, and did a live stream of that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, then, yeah, please consider supporting me at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Other than that, apologies for the audio issues at the start. I don't know what to do about that because it keeps coming and going. But for now, I'm going to say goodbye, get some food and then play some Gloomhaven. Cheers, everyone. Good night. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.